Hello, and welcome to the Chord Creator video. For the overview of this program, we'd like to take a look at Chord Creator and everything that it does. Chord Creator is an application that enables program and combi creation, editing, and management for many Chord workstations to support PCGs. A PCG is a program combi group, and specifically sample-based ones that are based on specific user sample files rather than the ROM multi-samples that exist in the Korg workstation itself. Korg Creator does support ROM types of multi-samples, but mainly the purpose of the program is to support the sample-based ones, which are a little difficult to work with. Now, Korg workstations, in our view, include the Kronos, the M3, and the M50, and most of the Triton series. All these workstations from Korg can load user samples in the form of files that go along with the PCG. Korg Creator is based on the creator type style of program that we've created a number of years ago and was always meant to support workstations which generally use the same type of format. These include the whole Yamaha Motif series, like the original Motif, the ES, the XS, the XF, and the MOXF. It also includes the Roland Phantom series, the Alesis Fusion, and also any Kurzweil K2000, K2500, and the PC3K, and the new Forte. But for Korg, we're talking about the Kronos, the M3 series, and the Triton. Korg Creator has some really powerful features. It can import any type of WAVE and AIFF file formats and also slice file formats such as Recycle, Acid, and Apple Loops. It also takes advantage of Chicken System's innovative conversion engine, which can import any professional instrument format, such as Contact, EXS24, Giga, SoundFont, SFC, Falcon Slash Mach 5, Reason NNXT, pretty much anything that isn't copy protected is supported. Core Creator also includes an auto sampler that can automatically record any software or hardware musical instrument. So, if you have some old Korg synthesizers, like the Trinity or even the M1, you can automatically sample that using MIDI and audio cables to sample those instruments. This also includes software samplers that incorporate copy-protected libraries or software synthesizers or things that don't have readily available sample data that you can convert. Now what you're looking at here, and let's go to the screen instead of just talking, this is the Korg Creator document. A document is representative of a PCG file. It shows you the different chain of objects that are included in a Korg unit. The interface is designed to easily show the elements of a PCG file. We'll go into that detail in a second. Korg Creator supports mono multi-samples, which is most common, and also stereo multi-samples. The nice thing about Korg Creator is that it doesn't show you two mono multi-samples to make up the stereo. It just shows one object, so it's much easier to work with. You can audition each of the samples, and you can audition even a multi-sample. One more thing before we get to the interface. The Korg Kronos is quite the instrument. It supports streaming. Well, it's really not so much streaming, but the fact that everything in the Kronos is stored on an SSD, which is a solid state mechanism. When we're talking about streaming, the Kronos doesn't have to load all the samples into memory before it gets played, it simply references the samples on the SSD. And it just works. The Kronos doesn't take any time to load at all. So now let's go to the Korg document and start describing it a little bit. Okay, we're looking at a new blank Korg Creator program that we started out with. As you can see, the program bank was set to internal A and it shows all the programs that are listed, 1 to 128. You see the program names and the categories and such like that. Then you have the zones, which is what the programs reference. Then these two lists are the multi-samples and samples. Now this doesn't say much because it's just blank. So let's close this down and let's open an actual PCG file. Actually, you can see it here. Let's delay what we're doing and take a look at how things are listed out within a PCG on a Kronos. It's slightly different for the M3 and Triton, and I'll go into that later. 
This is the PCG and that's what we work with. A PCG defines all the program information and combi information. It also references the multi-samples that each zone references for the program. So, a PCG relates to the KSC file, which means Korg sample container. It's a file that goes along with the PCG, so when you move the PCG into the Korg, it will ask you if you want to load that. Now, normally what happens with the Triton and the M3, this loads a folder which is like that, but on the Kronos is slightly different. This loads this, which loads this. I'm not going to tell you how, it's too complicated. This loads this, and then this loads the same name file as this, is where all the multi-samples and samples go. Let's go inside this and take a look. When we look at this, we can see things are organized fairly simply. As you can see, we've got a multi-sample, which is a combination file, and it loads everything in the folder with the same name. Let's go ahead and open this up, and you'll see inside all the KSFs, and a KSF is a sample file. Now this is really complicated, and it's not something that we think is very well designed. That's one big thing about Korg Creator, which makes it great because it isolates you from all this complexity. Okay, let's go ahead and go back into Korg Creator, and with that open, we can access our PCG. You can see it's loading right up, and you can see this was user G, and the name of this particular program is Jazz Vibes 4. You can see it has three velocity zones. Check so that they're enabled. 0 to 85 is this velocity range, 86 to 110 is that velocity range, and 11 to 127 is that velocity range. And you can see the multi-samples here. This is the first multi-sample. The lowest one takes number one, the middle one takes number three, and the highest one takes number five. Now, these are the numbers but you can kind of tell that they're a stereo because you can see it's left, left, left. Two is hidden from you. That is the right one, but we don't reference it. Now you can see the samples. And let's go ahead and audition one. Okay, let's get to the important stuff with Korg Creator. Let's start and create a new Korg document, import some samples, import some foreign files, and use the auto sampler. This is really the core of what you'll be using Korg Creator for, because the goal is to make PCG files and user samples with accompanying files that you can put into your Kronos, your M3, or your Triton. For the sake of it, we'll just be doing Kronos for now but this all applies to the M3 and the Triton as well. So let's start Core Creator. And it asks us if you want to create a new document. That's for the Kronos, and usually we use the user GBank, but you can use any of them. Again, this is just for the Kronos. As you'll see, with the M3, the choices are a little more limited, and with the Triton, it's much more limited. Make sure if you're using the LE or the TR that you check this box. Going back to the Kronos, it's the user GBank. So we will create a new Korg document. And a little big here, so let's resize the dialog to fit our screen. As you can see, it's all blank. It starts you off with one user bank of 128 programs. When you select one, you see the oscillators and the different elements. Here, let's make it a little clearer. We've got no multi-samples and no samples. So, let's open up a bunch of samples that we can look at. Pick ones out of here. Well, let's do something better. 
Let's go to the Marcato strings and let's just select a bunch of them. And all you do is you drop them in the samples. As you can see, it creates a new multi-sample automatically with the default name and it carries over the names and gives you the low key and the high key. You can also see it just applied one note to each sample, so it just makes it nice and easy. And then we can see here, they're all listed, and of course, when you select, click on a key like I just did, it selects a corresponding wave sample. And of course, you can play the sample here. Just like that. So let's go on and make it a little neater. Let's rename the wave sample, My Test. And we can just drag it over and assign it to a zone. You can see it's selected and it's there. Now we've got the user program, so let's just call it Sample Test and set it to that. So I choose another program and of course, nothing's there. Go back to Sample Test and there, it's all there. So that's how you do samples. You can also use the built-in sampler editor to change the key range, do this. To do that, as you can see, this has changed. Let's go further and import a foreign program. While we're at it, let's just take the Marcato Violins instrument, EXS24 file, and you can do this with any number of formats. We'll do another one as well. Here's an EXS24 file, so let's just drop it on this program, on the program list. And we say, okay, we want it to be program number two. There it is. It shows you the details, and it's all right there. As you can see, there are two velocity zones, and it created two multi-samples. You see, they're all there. You can see that the key ranges are all lined up to the way they were in the original EXS24 file. You can audition those using the play buttons on the list. Let's do another one. Let's go to one of these EXS files and do this. Let's try this SFC file and let's move it here. See how fast it goes? Let's audition another sample. Nice and perfect there. So we've imported individual samples. You can change those. And you can import foreign instruments as well. You can see how nice this is done. So you can just go down and name anything you want. I can rename this to SFC Test Instrument. Or you know you can change things if you don't want something as archaic as this. So we've imported samples, and we've imported foreign formats. Now let's go for the auto sampler and see how that works. We've already set this up to where I'm going to launch a program called Sforzando by Plog, which is a real nice free software sampler. Sforzando loads FSC files, so we can go in. Let's load this particular one just for fun. You can see this is all set up here. And we've done it all ahead of time to where it outputs out of a little program called Soundflower. That's an internal audio driver that records internal audio within a computer. You can see it's being controlled by the MIDI IAC bus. That's how you get the MIDI out of the auto sampler. This will be different on Windows. We suggest referencing your manual on how to set this up. We've already got this all set up to work. Move this down here so we can see. You can see this down here. So we're going to auto sample this Sforzando instrument. Remember, it doesn't have to be Sforzando. It can be contact or any virtual instrument that you have, or even an external rack or keyboard. For example, even a Yamaha DX7, or your Oberheim, or anything external. Your Motif, or even your Kronos. Perhaps you want to record some ROM programs. This would be very effective for that. So how to do this? Just right click, you go import from auto sampler. This opens it up. You've got the MIDI out and the audio in. 
and you've got everything set up. We've even done the placement. So for just simplicity, I say, okay, sample of the D and the A from the third octave. And we've named it FSC Auto. So that's nice and easy. The recording, we've got it set up when we want to loop it. It's not automatic, but it just puts in a standard loop into it. The basic tab is pretty much everything you want to do. You can redo the name. This is the audition thing we'll do in a second. You can see it's going to work. We are trimming the start and trim. And now we click audio test. That is good. We need to make sure that the MIDI is going out and the audio is coming in. So I'm going to click this. The meter should be reacting. And yes, they are reacting. So you know they're getting something in. So now let's start and click record. Four total channels, two keys, one velocity. It tells us all the information we need. So let's start. It's recording. That's the first note. There's the second note. It's almost done. And we can see it's done. There's a new wave sample that has the two things here with the key ranges. And then there's your program. Now let's save the PCG to some name like this. And then we'll save as to the documents folder. Of course, you could just do it out of here. That's extension PCG. It's saving it. And it's all done. So that's basically how you do a cork document and fill it up with a whole bunch of elements. Inevitably, you probably just want to fill it all up and then give it over to your Kronos and have it all there. Now let's take a look at the preferences of Core Creator and see what they're about. There are six tabs. General, Colors, Import, Export, Data Processing, and Audio MIDI. The General tab. The Preparer Audio Audition Format is when you prepare things in the multi-sample list. You can launch it out to some other software sampler. You edit the things there you shut it down and then it relays the information to the multi-sample. New import format. This is when you start up Core Creator, it will pre-select or choose what it's going to go in. In other words, what happens is that if you import something just without any document loaded, this is what determines what import format it is going to be. Parameter tolerance is for the foreign imports. It eases up on the ultimate organization of the multi-samples, so there won't be too many oscillators and zones, etc. The load method is very important. A Kronos file structure has one PCG, two KSCs, and a folder. That's if you've got virtual memory selected. That means it will stream off the internal SSD. Once you get it into your Kronos. Now you have to remember, you have to put those files on your SSD in order to stream. They will not work if you leave them on your USB drive. You can also use sampling mode. This creates the normal PCG and KSC files and the samples folder. That's the normal setup. But if you have a Kronos, you probably want to stream things. Remember, if you're going to M3 or to Triton, none of this makes any difference. So always do the sampling mode type. Everything else is pretty much self-explaining. Color keyboard, auto load waveforms when you select them. Middle C displayed as C3. Now that's common for what Kronos displays. Check for updates, you know what those things are. 
colors is what you would think it would be, the wave display. You've got the keyboard where the primary and the alternate area are. Import talks about what happens when you drag files into the samples folder. Now usually it's set to chromatic. You can set it to embedded mode or via velocity or name pattern. You can set up the name pattern based on the file name of the parent folder. Use key range. That's the starting point and the ending point of the range. The export dialog tells you how Core Creator exports samples. There's a function to where you can take a PCG structure and just spit out all the samples that exist within it into WAV files. These are different options where it's WAV or AIFF. You can create folders for multi-samples. The export text shows what the delimiter is and the way the names are dealt with. Data processing. You can do beat detection and pitch detection when you import individual sample files. This determines how they're done. And lastly, the Audio MIDI tab allows you to choose your driver type and what your preferred outputs and inputs are. That's pretty much it for Core Creator. If you have any questions, of course check the manual, or you might want to get a hold of us at 320-235-9798, or email us at support at chickensys.com. We hope you find this helpful. Thank you very much, and happy sampling.